Well, I'll tell you what, I'd say that we had just about arrived at the time here on Adventuring Academy, uh, where we, myself and my guests dive into the hot button issues currently rending the tabletop space asunder. Folks, it's time for Contested Roll. Contested Roll is where uh, myself and my guests um, take an issue of division uh, with incredibly high stakes not incredibly high stakes, it's actually very frivolous. Low stakes, don't, don't, don't be mad. Um, uh, and we dive into it and debate it. And as always, I guarantee you, my friend, whatever position you take, I will gladly take the opposite. Uh, Johnny, is there any issue that's come across your radar here in the tabletop space that you feel compelled to advocate for one side? Okay, so this, I came prepared today. Mm -hmm. uh, I knew this was this was uh, part of one of the segments. That I know it's new, new segments on the show. Mm -hmm. um, and yes, I don't know, I don't really hear this being a hotly debated topic, but it's something that I would love to introduce to the space and yes. hear people's uh, reactions to it. I think that you're in combat and your character goes down. Yep. Zero hit points, you're at, uh, you know, things are looking rough for the party. But maybe your barbarian, your wizard, your cleric are feeling like, okay, it's, you know, just went down, you got three turns before we're, you know, two, two turns until we're worried about anything. Well, I think, you know, when you are rolling death saves, that should be one of the most climactic points of a D&D session. Mm -hmm. But most people consider, okay, we have some time to worry about that. That's why I think, I bring to the table, that death saves should be a private role between the player and the DM behind a screen. That way, nobody knows. You can try to read the player's reaction, but I think nobody knows if that was a, a 19 or if it was a one, if you have one turn before there's a possible death in your party, uh, it really brings some tension to the table uh, that you don't really get when you see somebody, okay, I rolled a 12 and I rolled a 15, I'm probably gonna get up you know, in the next couple turns. You don't need to really worry about me. Uh, you can have two rolls and think, okay, this person could be dying. My best friend in this game could have their character dying. I need to go help them. I don't wanna just wait for them to you know, get up on their own. I am gonna have to figure out a way to disagree with that, <laughs> and that's the hardest thing I'll ever do. Because that a, idea yeah. fucking slaps. Oh, <laughs> I, it's, it's not a, something I've seen. Not a home rule that I've seen a lot of people uh, do. And I honestly, I, I found out about this rule too late in my games to really introduce it. It's like this is a session zero type thing where it's yeah. like, hey, I'd love to be able to put this in the in the game. I don't know if I want to throw that stress on somebody in the middle of a campaign. Yeah. But it's. I think from now on, all my session zero or, or session zeros are going to say, okay, we're going to be rolling death saves behind a uh, behind a screen. a screen. All right, cool. Let me get into character to yes. disagree with that awesome idea. Hold on. Um, uh, that's malarkey, and I'll tell you why. First of all, so uh, let's say I'm in that party. I'm playing a life cleric. All right, I'm walking around. I'm wielding the power of Paylor, all right? <laughs> I feel the might of the sun behind me. I am able to sense the existence of spirits. My divine abilities allow me to pierce the veil and detect magic, to see through shadow and darkness. And I can't tell whether the guy <laughs> five feet away from me is gurgling or not. Malarkey, I say. If I am able to pierce the veil and, uh, you know, if I'm able to swing on an invisible creature with just disadvantage, Advantage was well, statistical minus 2.5. <laughs> Certainly, I can tell if the downed barbarian is still amongst the living or no. I say roll it in public. <laughs> Uh, that is the, I've never believed anything I've said at less. That idea <laughs> is so. I can't wait to hear that on the next D20. <laughs> <laughs> I want to see, you know, I, I would love to see, Yoink. you know, behind, you know, make it a, a Tower of Doom uh, roll behind the screen. Well, it makes a lot of sense, right? Because, because I mean, the thing is, you could be dead on your second yeah. roll, right? Your second roll, if one of those is an at one, that's all she wrote. Yeah. So you can get two failures. There's an incredible idea within that. I love little home, home, brew rules like that that create the feeling you're looking for. And what I love there too is this idea of like good rules create feelings. Right. Right? A good rule creates the the emotional tenor you're looking for in your game. And I love as a dungeon master, you identifying something in your game and going, this isn't doing the job I want it to do. Like here's death saves and you go like, because I think what those death save rules are good for is 
getting people to calm down. Is right. you go, is that thing of like you roll it and you're like, okay, 15 guys, don't worry, I'm okay. Mm -hmm. Which there's some tables that may want to foster that attitude, but that's not you. Right. And you're like, no, I I want, I, I, if you're down, I don't like the idea that we have a bunch of heroes and someone gets clocked in the head by a troll's mace and everyone's like, he'll be good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think it's, um, you know, I've actually made it like an optional rule. When somebody goes down for death saves, uh, they can decide to roll it privately or not. You know, it takes a little bit of movement around the table, and all, you know, if it's you know if it's a remote game, maybe it's not even possible. But I allow it to, to be the play up to the player, and the ones that love drama are the ones that say yes, and that yes. I want to roll behind the screen because I think getting rising this tension at the table it's palpable. Uh, so being able to have that experience, just like as a player, I know I would say yes. Yeah. Well, it's so funny because I think that there are. Um, so uh, I have been kind of diagnosed a lot in my DMing as someone who loves public roles, which I absolutely do. Like mm -hmm. I love the box of doom. I love sharing roles at the table. I love to roll in front of the screen, but it's not something that is without an internal logic. Like mm -hmm. to me, the best part of a public role is when, is it's depicting a situation in which success or failure is immediately obvious. Right. It's right? not, you know, you're not making you know the second to last role public you're making the final most climactic role public because that's when the big reveal happens that's when all the t the tension is broken and the uh, you know the, the revelation comes and i think revelation is exactly it right. it's about the idea of and normally like the kind of roles that i think I most enjoy being public and think often should be public are the ones where you can clearly say, here's the number that means this, and if it's right. not that number, it means this, which is like an athletics check to jump across a ravine. There's no mystery about what mm -hmm. happens if you don't make it. We're mm -hmm. all gonna watch someone fall to their death. Like, and that is the kind of role that it feels the best to be like an 11 or higher, and you live. Yeah. And all of a sudden you create this little ritual moment where for, and I think what I, the thing I, I've sort of said before in the past, but never on this show, is the ritual moment of that that I love the most is it actually unites the DMs and the players for a second. Yeah. Where you go- You're on their side. You're on their side. You go, here's the numbers, we're gonna roll, it's up to the dice, and we're all together again. Right. We're, we're all a family watching as fate does what it's gonna do. And that, I think, is a very significant moment. However, the moment you're talking about is really great because there are times where uh, there are times where drama is aided by clarity and mm -hmm. revelation, and there are times that drama is aided by mystery and secrecy. I think the more dramatic irony that you can have at the table mm -hmm. before the you know the big climax, before the revelation, is the better. Yeah, I mean, it's hard to argue that death save thing would be so great to to be there and literally look at someone and be like, your friend is about is about to make their second death save. Mm -hmm. um, there's only, if you let them roll the second death save, there's only a one in 10 <laughs> chance that one of them was a natural one. Right. So they're probably fine. Do you, <laughs> do you feel like they're fine? Right, and the best <laughs> moment would be as a cleric, you know, healing your buddy after one roll and say, I rolled a natural one on that first roll. You saved me from my next roll of possibly dying. Yeah. And getting that, you know, getting that revelation at the end oh. is, would feel amazing. Yeah, God, to be that, per and, and to also, I think what I love about that too is there are certain mechanics that aid role playing by being revealed, and there are certain mechanics that aid role playing by being concealed. Yeah. And the idea of being like, hey, you don't have this level of insight into this dying person, yeah. to be like, what would you, emotionally, what would your character do? Mm -hmm. Your character just saw your best friend get downed by something. Are they sitting there being like, well, it takes the body like minutes mm -hmm. to bleed out? And you're like, <laughs> no, you're gonna fucking leap to their aid. Yeah. And like, but it also does reward like an incredibly risky, it makes that thing of like, of like, oh no, like the evil lich is gonna teleport away on their next turn. Like, yeah, they downed you with a legendary action. Do I help you? Right. Or do I use this one last turn? I have to, and it makes that really matter right. even more. I love that homebrew. <laughs> I am immediately stealing that. <laughs>